Hello, welcome to my talk. I will present a paper entitled Faster Do Lattice Attacks for Solving LWE with Applications to Crystals. This is a joint work with Thomas Johnson. We are from Lund University. Now I give the outline of the paper. I will start with an introduction, then I will present the new algorithm and uh, its applications. I will later present the experimental verification of the algorithm and uh, finally the conclusions of the paper. Now let's start with the introduction. We know that we are facing threats from quantum computers. The currently used public key crypto systems based on factoring discrete log will be broken by Shor's algorithm if a sufficiently large quantum computer is built. We already see rapid advances in building quantum computers recently. For instance, Google has claimed its quantum supremacy. It's important to study post-quantum cryptography to find new solutions that can resist attacks from large quantum computers. The core effort is the NIST post-quantum cryptography project to find replacements for public key encryption and signature standards. Now this process is in its third round and seven finalists are selected. Among them, the majority are lattice-based. For instance, three out of four CAM and PKE finalists are lattice-based, uh, such as uh, Cyber, Kyber, and Enchu. Also, two out of three signature finalists are lattice-based, Falcon and Delisima. Here, Kyber and Delisima are from a package called Crystals. So why lattice-based crypto systems are so attractive? One main reason is that we can have security reduction to hard lattice problems means that we can achieve provable security. One main branch in lattice-based cryptography is crypto systems based on learning with errors and its variants, for instance, LWR and their ring and, ring and modular versions. For crypto based on LWE, we have Average case to worst case reduction, and based on LWE, we can build very efficient cryptographic primitives, and the applications can be versatile. For instance, we can achieve advanced constructions such as fully homomorphic encryptions based on LWE. Then, the concrete security of these crypto system can be related to solving an LWE instance. So, it's important to study the concrete complexity of solving LWE. So what is the learning with errors problem? Usually this problem is defined with an LWE oracle with these parameters NQ and the noise distribution kind. We fix a secret vector S and this oracle will uniformly pick a vector A and it will pick a, it picks a noise from this noise distribution and this oracle will output the pair A and B where B is uh, the inner product of AS plus this noise E. So for NIST PQC candidates, usually this noise distribution chi is modeled or approximated as a discrete Gaussian with mean C runs than the deviation sigma m. The secret S is sampled from the same distribution or from another distribution that can be even smaller or sparser. So we can formulate the secret distribution as a discrete Gaussian with mean zero and the standard deviation sigma s, where here sigma n is c times sigma s. For such candidates, the number of samples is usually limited. It could be slightly larger than n. The known approaches for solving LWE can be characterized into three main categories. The first one is algebraic approaches, including Aurora Ge and its extension of using Gorbona basis algorithms. So this type of algorithms are of main uh, asymptotic interest. The second uh, branch is the combinatorial approaches like BKW style algorithms, which generally require a large number of samples. The most relevant attacks is the lattice-based attacks, including primal and do attacks. Because do attacks is the main target of this paper, so we introduce it further here. So the aim of do attacks is to find a short vector uv in this do lattice. Then giving a sequence of LWE 
instances, then we compute the inner product of W and B, then we get this term. We see that this is small. Here, small means that the standard deviation is small because you see S and E are sampled from sparse distributions and uh, V, W is short. So this distribution can be distinguished from the uniform distribution. When starting circuitry parameters for lattice-based primitives, we usually study BKC reduction algorithm, which Block wisely call oracles to solve a shortest vector problem. Asymptotically, the best SVP oracles are implemented by CV. So we have this notation. BKC beta D. Here, beta is the SVP dimension and D is the lattice dimension. We have an important uh, model to estimate the cost of um, SVP oracle called Coral SVP, proposed in this famous uh, New Hope paper. The main idea is to keep the main complex term and discard the sub exponential term. So in this model, sieving can produce these many short vectors and the classic sieving complexity is 220 0.292 beta and quantum sieving complexity is this. So this Coral SVP model is very good because we can compile the security strengths of different uh, lattice-based proposals. But this model is just still just an approximation because the discarded sub-exponential complexity terms can be significant. We have a new research problem that given cost numbers represented in the Coral SVP model, how to determine if this number meets the security requirements from NIST, which is represented in the gate count metric. In Eurocup 2018, Lucas showed a significant gain called dimensions for free. Means that SVP in dimension beta could be solved using a sieve in a smaller dimension. And later, Albert Shadow in Asia Cup 2020 firstly started the classic call and the quantum complexity of sieving in the RAM model. Here, RAM means random access machine. So this research allows us to study the concrete complexity of lattice reduction algorithms without uh, removing the sub-exponential terms. Based on this research, in the official documents of uh, round three Kyber and Delisum, the designers study the beyond core SVP harness, means a classic gate count metric in the RAM model. They also take into consideration pro of pr progressive sieving, but they only consider primal lattice attacks. They dismissed the dual lattice attacks because first, most of those vectors are larger by a factor of square root of 4 over 3. Secondly, the trick of exploiting all those vectors is not compatible with the dimension for free trick. This sentence is cited from the run three official document of the lism. Here we call the trick of exploiting all those factors the MSV game. Our main research question is should we dismiss two lattice attacks when selecting parameters in lattice based cryptography? Here we focus on the RAM model. Our answer is no. Actually we can exploit both games, the uh, both the E4F game and the MSV game and we can still outperform primal attacks even though the short vectors are larger by a factor of this compared with the shortest vector. We also saw better classical and quantum attack results in the core SVP model. Please read the paper. And other memory models are beyond the scope of the paper. Now I will present the new algorithm. Now we present the new FFT distinguisher. This distinguisher is similar to the famous Blanchard bias attack on ECDSA when the alphabetic size is too large. He used a reduced size of signal points. Similarly, we reduce the alphabet size for FFT from Q to gamma, uh, where gamma is an element, invertible element in the Q, thus the FFT dimension can be larger. Also, the standard deviation of the remaining noise from FFT can be reduced by a factor of gamma. Now we give a more mathematical description. So we rewrite the LW samples as AG hat and BG by write AG hat to be gamma times AG modulo Q. Then this is equivalent to 
we write as had to be inverse of gamma times s. For example, we assume gamma to be two, then the inverse of gamma is q plus one over two. Then we write this equation in the integer form. So we compute this f function uh, for all possible s modulo two. We see that we operate on t positions, so there are two two t possibilities. We know that for the right guess, the compute uh, values of this format. So if we can use some reduction algorithms to, redu to reduce AIG hat to be small, then we know that this variable is small because the standard deviations of the random variables SI and EG are small. Otherwise, because Q is very large, then this distribution is uh, close to uniform for a wrong guess. We know that the computation can be accelerated by FFT. Now I could introduce the framework of the new do lattice attacks. In the first step, we map the entries in the matrix A. So we rewrite A into three submatrix A0, A1 hat, and A2. A2 corresponds to the last T1 columns, and the A1 hat corresponds to the next T columns. We write A1 to be gamma times A1 hat. In the second step, we find sufficiently many short vectors in the lattice uh, via lattice reduction. Here, lattice is this do lattice defined here. So we see that the lattice at dimension d is m plus n minus t1 and the volume of this value with high probability. In the next step, we guess the last t1 positions and uh, we also use the new FFT procedure to guess the last t unknown positions. We see that we have redu for the exhaustive guess, we reduce the volume by q to t1, and for FFT guess, we reduce the volume by gamma to t. One main reason that the designers dismiss the do attacks is that they think it's hard to exploit both the D4F gain and the MSV gain. Here we present a new two-step lattice reduction framework to achieve this both gains. Firstly, in the first step, we do BKZ reduction with size beta, and then we obtain a reduced basis with a short vector B0 as a first vector in the basis. Then we look at the sublattice L prime generated by the first beta zero vectors in the reduced basis, and we perform a sieving step in this lattice and they get the list of short vectors of size this. Here this lambda 1 L prime is the shortest vector in this lattice L prime. But we know that in this lattice L prime we already have a short vector beta 0, a B0. So this uh, short, shortest vector will be, will be no larger than the size of B0. This value can be concretely estimated by this issue group work and also the time complexity of one reduction can be estimated similar to the method in the official documents of crystals. In this estimation, the sieving costs are concretely estimated using this issue script work. For this, we know that this can be bounded by the uh, size of B0. Uh, on the other hand, we can also use uh, Gaussian heuristics to compute this value. These two estimations will lead to very similar complex numbers. Usually, BKC includes calling an SVP oracle for many times, so we can see in the second step with a larger dimension to balance the cost. So we have a beta zero is larger than beta prime, means that we have a, a few dimensions for three in the second step. So intuitively, we have three dimensions in both steps. The D4F gain can be estimated by two models. The first model is first proposed by Dukas using uh, asymptotics. So this is a symptot called a symptotic model. Later, Albus et al. shows that Jessica Seam framework can achieve larger dimension for free via a technique called on-the-fly lifting. So they get an extrapolation model from experimental data. We will use both models to study the concrete complexity. So now we can present the main complexity theorem. We see that the time complexity of the new algorithm can be estimated as c over p0, where p0 is the property that the partial secret is one of the guessed vectors. We can see that c consists of two parts. This part is from lattice reduction, and this part is from guess and uh, FFT. 
So we see that these two these two parts are additive, but here gas and FFT can reduce the volume by a factor of Q to T1 uh, and uh, times gamma to T. So this is uh, why this algorithm can outperform the previous uh, do attacks. Here is the sample complex as estimated by this formula, and uh, this uh, gamma t times n uh, guess is the number of uh, hypotheses. So this is from this formula is from from information theory for hypothesis testing. We set c zero to be four, which will be experimentally verified later. Next, I will introduce applications of the new do algorithm. So first, I will introduce applications to Christos Kyber. We see that this table shows the gate complexity comparison and the cost is given in log 2 of the operations and here gamma is 2. We show the claimed security levels and also we show the complexity numbers for the new do lattice attacks in asymptotic D4F model and in the Jessica D4F model. We see that the gains are generally big, for instance, for Kyber 1024 in the Jessica model we achieve a gain of almost 15 bits. According to the analysis, we see that some schemes are really on the edge and some schemes offer a rather limited security margin. For Kyber 768, in the Jessica model, we see that this scheme has a two bits of security loss. Similarly, we see significant improvements when applying the new algorithm to security parameters of crystal stelisma. We see Delisma 3 and Delisma 5 offers limited security margins. We also apply the new algorithm to solving some FHE parameters. This table shows a complex comparison for the security parameters in the homomorphic encryption standardization draft, aiming for classical security. Here, n is 1024 and we choose gamma to be 3. The secret distribution is a uniform distribution from the set minus 1, 0, and 1. And the standard deviation of the noise variable is 3.2. We see that we could solve some parameter sets faster than its claimed security level. Here, the Jessica D4F model is assumed. We next present experimental verification. We know the D4F gain and the MSV gain have been extensively verified. So, we mainly verify the data complexity of the new FFT distinguisher. We first generate the samples in the queue of this form. Here, each AIG hat was generated from a discrete Gaussian chi sigma 1. EJ was generated from another discrete Gaussian chi sigma 2. We set Q to be 3329 and SI is generated from a uniform distribution in Z2. We implement the new distinguisher to recover S with dimension T. This table shows our experimental data. We have two sets of experiments with different sigma 1 and sigma 2. We pick T to be 8, 12, and 16, respectively, and we choose C0 to be 4 to 1. We compute the sample complexity via the theoretical estimation, and we test it 1,000 times for each, each parameter. Then we compute the success rate. We see that the theoretical estimation is accurate, and setting C0 to be 4 can ensure a high success probability. In our experiments, the success rate is always 100% when C0 is 4, meaning that we succeeded 1,000 times in 1,000 tests. For a fixed C0, the success probability generally increased when T became larger. We now conclude the work. We have proposed a faster do lattice attack with two main novel contributions. Firstly, we proposed a new Blation by a style FFT distinguisher that can reduce the volume of the used do lattice. Secondly, we proposed a new two-step lattice reduction strategy allows us, allowing us to exploit both the D4F gain and the gain of one sieving producing many sort vectors. We applied this new attack to crystals and obtained significant gains in the RAM model. These, for instance, these parameter sets either offer low, very low security margin or they are really on the latch edge. Assuming for the Jessica D4F model, we see that Kyber 768 has two bits of security loss. 
With this new attack, we can also solve certain FHD parameters faster than the claimed security levels in the RAM model. Actually, this new attack has very wide applications in lattice-based crypto. In the extended version of the paper, we applied the new attack to Enchu and obtained sharper, sharper results for these parameter sets. So this parameter set claim 209 bits of security in the RAM model means that they can only offer 2 bits of security margin regarding the primal attacks. Our new do attack can reduce 8 to 10 bits further depending on the selected D4F model. So the complex number is estimated to be about 200 bits, meaning that this parameter set is below the security level of NIST 3 in the both D4F models. Thank you for your attention.